Listen, man, shout out to Facts and Stacks Podcast. Yo, you drop the camera. You got to keep it up, baby. I got you. Stop it. Stop it. Let me show you how to operate. Two six seven. You see me down here. Stacks and Facts Podcast. Check them out. Seven Facts and Stacks podcast. Yeah, okay. Subscribe right, right, right now. Right. Check them out. All Tune in, and it's just like that. Back in, back in here to make it clear. It's your host Rob Lowe bringing y'all another City Fest live. This gonna be a special one. Out all the special ones, you know what I'm saying? We got Aqua Mermaid in the building. How you feeling? I'm feeling good. How are you feeling? Doing great. Doing great. D, what's up, bro? What's up? What's up now? I remember you already performed at Creative House DMV at the pool party. Yeah. <laughs> that song was lit. And I already knew you was about your business the way you came on that stage and just said it all. So yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry if I'm starting this off, Rob, but I, I just want to yeah. ask you, which one you like more, the studio or performance? You said what? Which one do you like more, the studio or performance? I like performance. I, I, I like both. I like both, but I like performing. Like I like to actually like get on stage and perform. Okay. okay, okay. So what you looking forward to doing at City Fest? Um, I'm gonna be doing um Rockstar Love and Crazy. Yes. I'm gonna be doing those too. Yeah, at the pool party, was, at the pool party, I was stressed out, okay, because Mother Nature came in the building. It was hot. We back. You know, we had the, you know, um, we had the microphone, but the long cord and stuff. So it was like you couldn't really do too, too much and stuff like that. Um, but I'm, I'm ready for City Fest. I'm excited for it. Oh, so you're ready to let loose, now. You're gonna be all on this side. You're gonna be all yes, on this I'm side. Ready. Order. Yes, yes. The, the show at the um, Creative House was on like a random day at a random time, so I couldn't bring my friends. Like none of my peoples could come out. They was at work. So like this show, all my friends and stuff is coming up. So it's gonna be fun. That's what's up. Okay. So this is a whole new style to me. All right, awkward. But this is a whole new style. It's like you giving me R and B, you giving me pop, you yes. giving, giving me everything I need all in one. It's 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 new to me. So where did you get your inspiration from uh, creating this type of music? Well, you know, um, I started off doing trap music, but when I was doing trap music, I thought I was sounding normal. Like, you know what I'm saying? And people was like, no, you don't sound like <laughs> regular trap people. I'm like, what? I think, I think I'm doing it normal. They was like, no, you don't even sound like you're from here and stuff. But I've always been creative. I'm a, um, I'm a Gemini and a Cancer, so I'm very creative. And I always, like, I get bored fast. So that's how I got good with music. Like, once I mastered, like, okay, I mastered trap, I got bored with it. I was like, what else can I do? that did r and B. I I was like, okay, I like that. What else I have to do? But I've always been like a fan of like Eminem. Eminem been my favorite. Lil Wayne, you know, like um, Nicki, of course. I love those. got like, balls for real. Yeah, i always been a fan of like creative people like Missy Elliott, Doja, Pink. I like Pink. Um, uh, Paramore, like my music catalog is like all over, like down to even heavy metal. So like, I always just like, always want to do something different. Okay, okay. So yeah, I think he was talking about Rockstar Love and Crazy earlier. Yeah. Too, right? The two song. Crazy, I rock with that one heavy. You had some crazy bars in that joint from like the JT to the to the Justin Timberlake joint. You had you know crazy like, joint in there too. You know, like wow. I think people, when it comes to my music, People be listening, but they don't be listening. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, and, like the guys, believe it or not, like my male fans, they listen. So they they come back and tell me like a line that I was like, I didn't even think you noticed that. And I'm like, yeah, I heard you say this. And I was like, yeah, that's tight. You know, boo, boo, boo. the females, if it just sound good, they want to just vibe. So they don't yeah. know what I'm talking about. They just going to go with the flow. But the the dudes, they be the ones coming to me, like, saying stuff back, like, oh, I like when you did this and did that. So, like, I be telling people, like, um, it's hard to do, like, me, sometimes I like to just make music. So I won't be so lyrical. I just wanted to be a vibe. But 
it's like a really talent to be able to be lyrical and make oh. a vibe with a song. Because, you know, the DB do have some girls that can rap their ass off, but they can't give you a song. Like, they can't give you a hit song. Do you got some girls, they got cute, fun songs, but it ain't lyrical. Like, it ain't really nothing that's like, you know. Okay, so, shit. to be able to do both, it's like, you know, it's like, yeah. Like, you know, it'd be hard because a lot of times when I was on the studio, I don't never think about you got to perform this. So, like, I have songs like um, Jamaican. And that's a fast tempo, like rapping. Yeah. And then I'm like, God damn, I got to perform this. Again. <laughs> and you know, you I go perform the, with you my go lead. to the gym before I, you perform that. I perform with my lead off. So I'm like, God damn, I'm gonna catch my breath. Like, I ain't thinking yeah. about all this making the song. I just be into it. So it's like, it's fun. I like being creative and doing different things. Okay, so I want to go on the other side. It was, it's okay to cry. Right? That's yeah, so I made. That's I'm not a emotional female, okay? I'm not <laughs> I'm not sensitive. So, you know, I'm learning to like put things into music. So at that time, my two best friends, we're not best friends no more, but they were moving to um Houston and the song is basically about when they move, you know, because I even though I'm popular, I'm popular, but I'm introverted. So like people know me, but they don't know me. Like they just know me. <laughs> so when they left, it was like, oh my God, like they really left me. I'm just out here, you know, by myself. And then um last year, last year with the music, we took a lot of um L's that wasn't our fault, like just bad business with people and um, a lot of times, like, you know, like, especially with the DMV area, um, they don't want to support an artist until they already make it. Then they want to support it. And, you know, it's like, I have the music. Like, one thing about me, I be real honest with myself. Like, I be like, oh, no, I need to work on this or this or that, that. Like, I be like, my music is already good. Like, what the fuck is the issue? And at the time, you know, my manager... Um, he spent a lot of money on me and we were putting out the money like pay if we need to pay you like even for the radio it was like we need right. to pay you or pay you right. they was turning me down um i did um you know songs with other artists they fucked the money up and it was just like we was going through so much and nobody knew that because you know like i'm not emotional i don't show it i just like fuck it and stuff like that but then like this year for some reason like this year it really like was like Oh my God, like it's so unfair. Like, what the fuck? Doing everything <laughs> right. We, you know what I'm saying? So, like, when I made that song, it was like, I don't cry. Like, I don't cry. Like, my manager be trying to give me a hug. I don't know how to accept affection. So, it was like with that song, it was just like, you know, like, I don't, is it okay to cry? Because I don't know. Like, you know, I don't cry. So, that song was basically just talking about like all the L's and stuff we took with music. And usually you take L's with music when you're like being greedy or, being bad we were actually like being genuine with people and keeping our word my manager is the type that's like if he say you can say oh i charge five thousand for a music video you're getting that money that same exact day and he's like that's how he is so it's like we were doing all these things with people and they were just like wasn't getting tickets. five thousand back in return worth yeah it wasn't we wasn't getting what we were putting out in return we was getting bullshit. but then it'd be people outside of the den be like big radio stations in Houston and they, they was playing me with no problem, no money, no nothing. They were like, well, I like it, I'm gonna play it. And keep it in rotation. Then we come here to the radio station here. It's like, oh, we got woo woo woo. But then I had a DJ friend, DJ Ricky Platinum. He does the Jamaican and Caribbean music. He DJs on a certain day, got my song on there, uh, like with no problem. So it's like, what am I doing wrong? Like, you know what I'm saying? So like when I made that song, it was just more so like, what am I doing wrong? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, and people don't understand, like, it's really hard to do this and to have a real life outside of this and still trying to like keep your mental strong enough to keep going through this. And like, I live a very three oh, yes. type of life lifestyle. So it's like, you know, and they all different from each other. So it's like doing, when I wrote that song, it was like, okay, let me just say a little bit so people know like what the fuck is going on. Yeah. Now you said a lot of bit right there. The people know what the fuck is going on now. And you know what's funny? Um, if you Go ever ahead. listen to my music, it's a male singing in the back. That's my producer. He sings too. That's what's up. 
Bro. What's up? Shout out to him. Shout out to him. And I see. Yeah, uh, his name is MK. He works with. He actually works with a lot of people in the industry and stuff like that. He's really dope. Um, I'm his first okay. artist that he has like this. So I be testing him. Like when I be like, I want rock music. He never do songs like this. He do trap and R and B. So. When he got with me, he like, oh, like you just like making me better because you're making me out of my comfort zone. So yeah. he's dope. That's that's who produced everything. Him and my bro AJ. Them they actually tag team together to come up with certain songs I had. Shout out to MK, shout out to AJ, and I'm assuming that's they affiliated with like Magnum Music. That's who um, yeah. mm -hmm. rocking with now, and you're trying to go for more of a global feel because I see yeah. I understand exactly what I you're always feel like time. when it comes to especially me, because I'm like, I'm very perfectionist. So when I finally lock in with like a producer, I like to just keep that one. Like, you know what I'm saying? I like to push him, like, because he knows me. Like, he knows that, oh, but I'll do songs like this. Oh, she gonna go up, she gonna go down. And she like this drop right here. Like, he already know me. Versus like working with new people, it's kind of like a whole nother like, getting to know me and hoping that they get it right. Because, you know, like even going in the studio and trying to get these beats right, that costs money too. So it's like, I be trying to like, look, I need you to be Ain't on it. Like, great. boom, boom, boom. So, but it's, um, I love working with them. They actually really nice and really humble, like really nice. And they always give me like good feedback and stuff like that. So I, I be liking that. All right. So I want to get to the dance. I want to know, did it come natural? Or, you know, did you have- So you know what's on? funny? Growing up, before I got into music, I was into like professional dancing. My family runs from dancing. So my cousins and them, I was the one who had the talent. I just didn't have the funds. Okay. I was the cousin who was going through a lot. And you know, as far as like parents and all that stuff. So they were dancing back up for B2K and Bow Wow and all of them. And I was the one who was like the best dancer, but I didn't have the funds. Like my life was very unfair at a young age. So I used to just dance all the time. Like I used to just be in the mirror and just dance all the time. So dancing was my passion. But then um, I started getting into like poetry. And then from poetry, I got into music. And then when I got into music, it was like, yeah, I wanted to do music. But then, you know, I got older and I became a stripper. So that dance is way different than dance I'm used to. So when I First started dancing, I'm like, I don't know how to do that. Like, I don't know how to do none of this stuff. So when I actually got into stripping and dancing in the clubs, I actually became like the face of the club. And I didn't even mean to become like that popular. I just became like the face of the club. And dancing was cool, but it just was never my personality. Like, I just was like, I don't need to be here. Like, I don't fit in. Like, even like now, like I still dance because, you know, I haven't made it yet. But even now, it's like I don't really fit in. Like my mind is not there. I'm so in tune with my music that like dance and feel like, uh, like why am I here? Like I just need this music to take off so I can quit. So I can just get the fuck up out of there. But it's hard because okay, like I'm not a female rapper who's doing trap music. Cause it will work together. You know what I'm saying? I'm doing pop and rock. And I'm in a hood environment. So it's like I'm really like it be at first I went through this phase with trying to brand myself because it was like, all right, I want to dress this way, but then people are not gonna book me for dancing because they like this bitch look weird, you know what I'm saying? Woo -woo. But then it was like, all right, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, but then it was like, I need to also <laughs> still market dancing because that's how I get my bookings. But then it's like, oh, shit, here come the people from the music world watching my Instagram. So now it's like, God damn, I can't post that on there because they're going to be like, all I see is ass. She's like another girl who wants to shake her ass. So it's like, I went through that whole like mental blockage. Like, I felt stuck. I still do feel stuck. Like, I'm like, what the fuck to do? Like, I don't know what to do. But now it's like, fuck it. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm just going to push my music. Like, you know what I'm saying? If I get booked in as far as with dancing and stuff, cool, you know, but it's like, you know, I'm just gonna push my music. And that was like a big step because I went from this female making like thousands and thousands of dollars on the weekend to like, all right, I'm dancing only enough to pay the bills. And, you know, so it's like, I had to adjust to that. And then like doing the music, I said, my manager had a lot of money. So he was actually full, um, wow, he's paying my rent so I wouldn't have to dance so I could focus on music. 
But when we had hit these L's with these people in the music industry, it cost us a lot, like a hundred K L. And it was like, God damn, I got to go back to the track. Like I got to go back to dance. And then, you know, my manager has a personal life, but, um, he just never gives up on me. Like he always calling me every day. Like, Hey, I, I, we're going to try this out. Like, if, we'll see if we can do this to see if we can do that. And woo, woo, woo. So it's like, it's hard. Like it's, it's hard. Like it's really hard. Like, I don't you know, know. you spoke on that perfectly is like the, the struggle of, you know what I'm saying, a talented black woman, you know what I'm saying, good looking black woman in America of you trying to keep your head on straight while you putting your best foot forward, but shit not lining up for you like you yeah. want to and you got to make some shape, right? You yeah, realize, and you know you what I feel some also sometimes I feel like in this particular area, by me being like black and you know mexican and rican and i'm light-skinned and i have a natural big butt and i'm pretty you would think a lot of girls will gravitate to me because i make music for the ladies but it's like don't get it twisted i have a lot of females that love my music support me but i also have these females that they don't want to support me because I'm kind of too good and i'm not a female they don't have no dirt on me i'm not out here fucking niggas and shit so it's like Females be what they want to support me, but at the same time, it's like jealousy or something, you know. And then I have the other females, the 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 normal females, you know, like the females who, you know, like the creative house clientele. They love me over there, like you know, what I'm saying they love the fuck out of me. But then it's like the other girls over here. It's like you know, they won't support me, and I feel like you know maybe if I was ugly or not that attractive, they'd be like, oh yeah, we like her, you know, what I'm saying woo, woo, woo. because I look at. The people that they put on, like, you know, like, people who can't rap for real, for real, they be all playing their shit, then I got me, you know what I'm saying? And then they just like, no. Like, just no. And then, like, even with men. I feel men like it go me. both ways. It go both ways. Cause, yeah, like, it goes both ways. And then hates, even with men. It can like, also be at the same time, like, all, all my fate, not all of them, but a lot of my favorite singers and, like, female singers and artists is, is good looking type shit you know what i'm saying yeah. it come it come with the territory a lot of times so d what you think about that i don't mean to cut you off Bobby. uh i can't all the way agree with that i can't all the way agree i got a couple of people you know look average i'm not gonna say you know they look average you know what i'm saying but they can still sing you know what i'm yeah. saying so i got i can't all the it's way just agree. like sometimes i feel like when you have too much like when you're different, you talented, and really nobody really could say nothing bad about you. Sometimes, far as from female artists, it it can like be a down play because females are very jealous of each other. Wherever they want to, make, females make everything a competition. And you know the you funny thing is the, the females that hate on me. So we yeah, and then the females that hate on me, they're not even artists. They're not even. They don't rap or sing. They're not even artists. It's just like you know, like no. And then when you're different, like I'm very different. I'm very versatile, I'm very different. That's another thing. It's like, you know, like, you know, I don't know. Like, I don't, mm, that ain't for me, boo, boo, boo. But then it's like, you know, like, prime example, they were saying stuff about Ice Spice. Yes, we know she's not the most lyrical female. But people thought that she made it because she was light-skinned. And it wasn't because she was light-skinned. Ice Spice was more marketable because she wasn't promoting coochie and violence and fuck them, get some money. You know what I'm saying? It's so many girls saying, fuck them, get some money. She she was, she she saw, like, you know what I'm saying? And the thing I keep telling people is when you be yourself, whether you're whack or not, you're going to make it. Like, just be yourself because eventually people going to say you're whack, but then eventually when they see that you're unbothered and you keep going and keep going, the world is going to like you because they're going to like that you're different. Like Sexy Red, she don't like the way of makeup. Like, she don't like the way of makeup at all. And she like, I don't care. This is me. Like, I don't give a fuck. And guess what? People went from calling her ugly to, oh, you hear Sexy Red all day, all through the radio. Oh, we like Sexy Red. Love her personality. Woo, 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 woo. And it's like, that's what females do. And then I get hated on by men because, like, I can actually rap. And a lot of times, guys will shade me like, oh, who be writing your music? Why is it that when a female actually can rap? Men think a man is corny. Music. That's, That's corny, corny to me. It's corny as fuck to me. And they always do that. Like they always say, Oh, who oh who wrote your stuff? I wrote my stuff. Like, I don't know. What the fuck? I wrote so, my stuff. I mean, I'm too crazy to have you had a line right. where he was saying, uh, would you rather be underpaid or overrated? I always took that to heart because I'm like, 
either people gonna say you not as good as they, you know what I'm saying, they think you is, or they gonna say mm-hmm. you don't get paid as much as you should, type shit. So yeah. I wanna get back to something you said earlier. You said, you know, guys listen to a lot of your lyrics, some of them come up and bring up some of your bars and stuff. I wanna get into rock star love because you gave a lot of instructions in that. So I want to yes. know, do the guys be coming up hollering at you like, yeah, I heard such and such. I got you. Know you what's know what's funny? Said. That's guys' favorite song. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm thinking like they're going to gravitate to like Vengeance and Crazy. Now, nah, niggas be like, rock star loves. Mm-hmm. Like, I just can't stop singing that song. Like, they like the yeah, yeah, yeah part in the beginning. Like, they be saying that part all the time. Like, the guys love that song. Like, they be like, oh, rock star love. I love rock star love. Like, I love the rock star love and stuff <laughs> like that. Guys like that song, and it's weird because I never think that the guys would have liked that one. But the you men giving out instructions. <laughs> the men love that song like they do. Uh, I bang with Sands also. I saw you do the video for what Fire and Water. Yeah, that's why I wanted to bring up earlier. You were fucking yeah. them up with the dancing on there. You know what I'm saying? Coordinating with your moves, but I fuck with the Sands though. Yes, you know, you know what's funny? Like Sands is my favorite because Sands has a deep a deep message behind it you know when you hear sense you think of sex and stuff but it's really not even about sex it's about um it's about it's kind of like a piggyback off of dirty diana but the story is different so sense is about a girl who is attracted to the bad guy like he's bad he got all these things but then he's looking at her like you ain't as good because you are attracted to bad guys, so you are just as damaged as I am. So it's like, you know, it's like, it's literally just like that. So, you know, it's like, I like sense. Like, I just like it. I like songs that's like smooth and deep at the same time and stuff like that. Um, I can't wait to shoot the actual video for that. Cause that's like, that's my favorite song. Hey, that's a bet. Close it out, D. I know you got one question left. I'm waiting on it. Mount Rushmore, she kind of <laughs> gave that out already, you know what I'm saying? But we go, I'm gonna go top five, top five favorite artists of all time. Okay, it's gonna go with no order, no particular order. Okay, um, okay, okay. Eminem is number one for me, he's number one though. Eminem is number one. Um, <laughs> no um, order, though, but M number one, M number one. <laughs> um, Nicki Minaj, Lil Wayne. Um, Busta Rhymes. I love Busta Rhymes. Ooh. Um, and what's your hands on your ass and see? Um, I like to say Missy Elliott because those is kind of like all the ones who who were different and you know what I'm saying they did their thing, they did they do all like, energy, all unique, all uniqueness. Like, you know, they broke the barrier, they didn't care. Hey, I feel like you're going to do the same thing. We're looking forward to seeing you August 19th at City Fest and beyond. You know, you're going to go around the whole globe. Yes, I'm excited. 